It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I wanted to talk about the supposed Mexican monster, David Benavidez, because, you know, he had his fight this past weekend with David Lemieux, and it was, a, it was an exciting fight. You know, both guys stood in the middle of the ring and traded. You know, uh, Benavidez had got hurt Lemieux towards the end of the first round. Um, had him in the corner, threw about like eight or nine straight uppercuts. Um, should have been probably stopped in the first round. Referee was a uh, uh, Harvey Doc. The referee surprisingly didn't stop the fight prematurely because he has a reputation for that, and he let the fight continue. Uh, Lemieux showed great heart and, and great determination to, to get in his chest and try to make the fight, but ultimately he was outgunned and outclassed by the the bigger, younger, stronger fighter, and that's what it was. It wasn't anything crazy that happened like it was the fight there were really no surprises as to how that fight played out so with that being said and with that being established here on true school sports let me just say this um and look let me before i say what i'm gonna say let me preface everything i'm gonna say by saying that like i think benavidez is a very talented fighter i think he has the attitude of a fighter i think he is down to fight anybody but i have to call a spade a spade now i'm getting sick of these narratives that he's this like ducked and avoided fighter because the reality is this and people are not gonna like this but I, listen everything i'm saying you can hate what i'm saying you could get angry you can get your fucking panties in a bunch but nothing that i'm saying can be refuted mark read my lips nothing i'm saying can be refuted you can actually go and research and fact check me on everything i'm saying so david benavidez while he while he gives off the attitude of a fighter who's down to fight anybody maybe he is i don't know but if we're going off of what's actually factual, Dave Benavidez, for good, bad, or indifferent, is one of the most protected fighters in boxing. That is a fact. Now, let me explain to you why I'm saying this, okay? Because, and the reason I'm saying this in the first place is because David Lemieux, everyone knew he was, in, everyone knew that, that Benavidez was, was going to stop Lemieux in six rounds or less. Everyone knew this. This wasn't like a surprise to anybody. Nobody knew, like, like Lemieux was once a champion at middleweight. He's been campaigning at 160 over the last year, building his record up and padding that shit up for a big fight like this. He got his chance, got his last payday, and that'll probably be his last, uh, at the end of his career. But people, it never fails. Like the last three fights, Benavides is fought Ronald Ellis, Kyron Davis, and David Lemieux. Guys that are not anywhere close to his level. If we're talking, if we're talking about David Benavides, like he's just creme to the creme, top shelf, elite, you know, 168 pounder, then why are people getting so why are people going so crazy over, you know, him beating up on guys that are not anywhere close to his level? And in some cases, guys that aren't even 68 pounders. But Lemieux is not really a 68 pounder. Um, Kyron Davis isn't really a 68 pounder. So, like, you know, it is what it is. But, like, he is one of the, whether you like it or not, he is one of the most protected fighters in boxing. Let's go back to... Um, was it January? Was it January 2020? If you guys watch the lives, whenever I talk about Benavides, I bring, I bring this up a lot. January 2020, before Canelo ever got to 168, Samson, or what Samson was asked the question of making a, a Canelo Alvarez or not Canelo, Caleb Plant, Dave Benavides unification fight. He said, "No, not this year. We need some more time." That was two years ago. Time is still ticking. We haven't got that fight. So that that was duck number. Uh, that was actually duck number. Duck number one. That was duck number one, okay? Later on that year, when he went to go fight Romero, Alexis, and Gulo, okay? This is like in August or September of 2020. Later on that year, when he went to go fight Romero, Alexis, and Gulo, and it was a good win. I mean, and Gulo was coming off of a, a good win against Sims. So I'm not saying it was a trash win or nothing like that, especially because he stopped him, but, you know, and Gulo's not creme de la creme like he is. But anyway, I digress. When he fought Angulo and missed weight, all right, he missed weight on the scale. We know that Dave Benavides has had problems with discipline, okay? I don't care what nobody says he has. Otherwise, he would have been in a position to fight Canelo Alvarez all those years ago because um, he would have still had the belt and he still would have been in that, in, that, in that great spot, you know? But when he missed weight against Angulo, he, the, the WBC wound up moving Benavides from the 168 rankings up to the 175 rankings. And they made him the number one contender at the at at the light heavyweight uh, division. This is 2020. He could have fought Arthur Betterbeer for the WBC title. 
And what do they do? What do they do? Benavidez, in conjunction with his team, went to the WBC and asked to be reinstated back into the 168 rankings, despite the fact that he was actually fighting in a weight class that's more of his natural weight class than 68. He's a he's a he's killing himself to make 168. Okay, everyone knows this. Everyone everyone knows he's not a real 168 pounder. He's really should be fighting a 175. So he gets put in the weight class that he should really be fighting in, which by the way. He's already fought on like five or six times in his pro career already, but nobody tells you that. Um, he has a ch the chance to challenge one of the hardest, most devastating punches in the sport and give the fans a great fight and, and, and really put himself in a position for massive fights. Because if he would have been in that position, Canelo Alvarez might have obliged him and taken the challenge, but he didn't have that belt, you know, so he didn't fight him. But Dave Benavidez... Uh, ducked Arthur better be clear as day. I don't care what you say. If you get elevated to a, a weight class as a number one contender in a weight that's more advantageous to you, and you decide to not fight the number one contender and ask and petition to get put back in the weight rankings of the lower weight class, it means either A, the fighter does not believe in his abilities to beat uh, uh, the champion in the higher weight class, or B, the team of the fighter does not believe in the in the fighter's ability to beat the champion of the high weight class. But either way, either one you want, either one you think it is, whether it's Samson and his dad, or whether it's David himself, it's not a good look. And and, and I say all these things not to put David down because I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to do that. I like David. I've been a fan of David for years. But I'm saying all these things to give people a fucking reality check because he's not no feared fighter. Okay, Jamal, you can say Jamal Charles don't want to fight him, but that's. He's not special. Jamal Charles doesn't want to fight anybody. Jamal Charles doesn't want to fight him. He doesn't want to fight Andre. He probably don't even want to fight Plant. So that, that, that's, that's not really a Benavidez thing. That's a Charlo issue. Jamal is just a lazy... He's become a lazy bastard with the belt. All right? He's become a lazy fighter with the belt. That's not really a David thing. That's a Jamal thing. But I'm just saying this to, to, to give people a reality check. Like, he is a, a fun fighter to watch. He is very talented. He could be one of the best fighters in the world. We don't know that yet because... Whether it's him or his team, things aren't happening. Now, ideally, right, we can't, we can't change the path. We, we can't change the fact that him and his team avoided Arthur Better Be here. But we'll, what we can change is what we do next, all right? That, that, and that's how life works. We can't dwell on the past and any past mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all fall short of the glory of God. I'm nobody to, to judge, but I'm just calling it how I see it. Benavidez now has a chance. Now, I, now look, I don't think he's going to do this. But I, but I believe that he would be a lot better at 175. He's, he's, he, first of all, he would, he would have to make, he, he would have had that sharp weight cut. Second of all, there's better fights. Like there's way better fights at 175 for David. Now these fights with Plant and Charlo and Canelo um, and and Morel, they're not getting any of those fights. And let me tell you why. All right, because uh, on the Samson had mentioned in his Samson his manager Samson Lukowitz. You know the very great manager. He uh, he mentioned the short list for the guys they want. They're looking at fighting next. Now he mentioned Plant, which I don't think is going to happen because Plant's not going to go straight into a big fight after fighting Canelo. I think Plant fight Anthony Durrell. Most people believe he'll fight Anthony Durrell. Some of the reports that we've heard in the past have been about him fighting Anthony Durrell. So I think that's where he's going to go. Maybe they could revisit that in the spring of 2023. You look at David Morrell Jr., great fighter. Exceptionally young talent, but he's only 6-0. and And with him being 6-0, and he's doing a lot of talking, trying to get his name out there. And I think he'd give Benavidez a great fight because I think De De Morrell Jr. is a special talent. But De Morrell Jr., I don't think that's a big of enough fight for Benavidez for Samson to want to actually uh, make that fight happen. But if, hey, I'll tell you this. If it happens next, all credit in the world. Um, and then he, uh, Charlo. Now, we've already talked about Charlo. Charlo doesn't want to do anything, so we, we don't need to... We, we don't need to uh, talk about Charlo too much. But, like, there really is nothing there on 160 for David Benavides, you know. Unless, I, I'll give David a healthy, a healthy alternative, right? I'll give, I'll give David a healthy alternative. Because he's not going to, I'm going to come out in advance. He's not going to get any of those three fights. He's not. It, so, when, when that time comes and he, he doesn't get any one of those three fights against Plant, Morel, or Charlo, I'll give David a healthy alternative to help him stay busy. Now, not too long ago, David Benavides... Um, was going to fight Jose Uskatagi, right? And Jose Uskatagi, good fighter, but he had lost, he's lost, he's already lost multiple times to Caleb Plant and Lionel Thompson. Now, you're not going to fight Caleb Plant, but I would love to see you fight Lionel Thompson because I'm going to tell you this, B 
people people may not like it. Lionel Thompson hasn't been able to really get fights. Um, but he's still in the gym. He's still working hard and, and, and waiting for that call. Give him a call because you are going to fight Jose Uskatigi, the guy that Lionel Thompson beat. He was coming off a Lionel Thompson loss, or maybe he had a fight or two after that. But he his last loss was to Lionel Thompson. And Lionel Thompson has only had one fight ever at 168. And Lionel Thompson's entire resume with the one Uskatagi win is better than David's entire um, super weight resume. Not saying that that makes him a better fighter because resumes don't win fights, but I'm just saying if you're going to fight the guy that lost Lionel Thompson, why don't you fight Lionel Thompson? I love that fight. You know, that's a healthy alternative. But you know, 175, you got guys like you know Zoro. I mean, that'd be a great fight. Zoro, I think, has a size, the craft because he is developing a little bit more craft in his boxing style with Julian Chua as his trainer, and people aren't talking enough about it. Um, he's got the size, the craft, the punching power, the experience. He's got a lot of experience. 44 fights in the pro ranks. Um, I think that'd be a great fight. Um, you got him. You got Better BF, who he could have been already fought. You got uh, Bivol, who just beat Canelo, who he's apparently sparred and beat up in sparring. But sparring don't mean shit. Sparring don't mean anything when it comes to being under the lights. So, you know, there's that fight if he wants to go try to explore that. There's a lot of fights. There's Joshua Watsi, there's Anthony Yard, there's Joe Smith Jr. There's a lot of fights at 175 against like top guys, like guys that can really fight their ass off. And it's better for his body, but no, he wants to sit there and he wants to just ha and create the illusion. And, and that's what Samson is doing. Samson is keeping him, I think it's Samson. Samson is keeping him at 68, protecting him at 68 because he doesn't, he wants to build the illusion that he's this killer. And listen, I, I hate to I hate to break it to you, Dave Benavidez is a very talented fighter. He can he can fight his ass off. We know this, but I don't I don't look at him as a killer because if he was really a killer, he'd be at 175, proving he's a killer. You know, it doesn't no good to fight these smaller guys at 68. Go to go to 175. You've already been two time champion at 168. Go go to 75. Fight them guys like Zordo. Zordo's dying for an opponent. Go 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 talk to Zordo. You know, fuck, fight Joe Smith Jr. if you lose the better BF. Fight better BF if you lose to the Joe Smith. Just do something but stay at 168. Because you can fool the casuals. You can fool a lot of these content creators here on YouTube. You can fool a lot of people. But I'm not, I'm not fooled by David Benavidez. And I'm going to tell you this. The David Benavidez hype is getting so outrageous and ridiculous that if somehow... The day ever comes where he fights Canelo Alvarez, I'll be, I, I will be rooting for Canelo Alvarez. Because you know what? And I know I'll raise, I'm the guy that made the Canelo Exposed by Bivol channel, right? But Canelo Alvarez is, 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 is a proven fighter. Canelo Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez can retire today. He's going into the Hall of Fame. Whether I like it or you like it or not, it's the truth. And you know what? Now, obviously, there was a lot of smoke and mirrors and a lot of bullshit in the career of Canelo Alvarez, but this shit going on with Benavidez is on a whole nother level. It's on a, it's, it's, he's, he's actually taking it to another level. I don't know if it's him or his manager, but who the fuck is in charge, all right? The whole team. I'm, I'm going to blame all of them. I'm, I'm going to blame David because you don't really seem adamant about wanting to go to 175. I'm going to blame his dad because when I asked his dad about Benavidez fighting better BF all them years ago, he talked about, oh, they got offered to fight a bottle jack. And Samson, so they all they're all to blame, and and until proven otherwise, Dea Benavidez will, will remain the most one of the most I can't I can't say the most, but one of the most protected fighters in boxing. I don't care how many interviews he does, I don't care how tough he sounds, I don't care how much he sounds like he's down to fight. The reality is these fights ain't happening. So um, you know it is what it is. But I I I want Benavidez to get these fights because I think he's worth the money. I think he's worth the time. I think he's worth. The attention um, of boxing fans. I mean, look, he's worth my attention. I'm, I'm, I'm 14 minutes in still talking about him. So clearly, there's something about this young man. There's something about this young fighter that um, that's worth talking about. And that's why I'm talking about him. Because I, I, I think he can become uh, great. Now, people people say, right, like, people say, right, oh, well, he's only 25, right? Like, And I'm getting sick of this in boxing. Like, the, the, like that's why boxing kind of pisses me off because... You know, when, when, when you criticize a fighter for, yes, he's young as far as his age, but in terms of ring experience and rounds boxed, he's not young. They say that people like to use the age thing. They say, oh, well, he was only, he's only 25. Motherfucker, when, when, when Oscar De La Hoya was 25, 
And let's go, let's go through right quick. When Oscar De La Hoya was like 25 or whatever, 23. We'll, we'll, we'll just say 23. When he was 23, Oscar was fighting top contenders and, and champions. Guys like John John Molina, Rafael Ruelas, you know, Gennaro Hernandez, Jesse James Leja. Man, he was fighting Chavez. When he was like 23, he was fighting Chavez because he was fighting Chavez when he was like 23, 24. Benavides is 25 and the best thing we've got from his career so far is that he had a great combination against Porky Medina. Like, come on, man. Like, let's get it together, you know? So we'll see, man. But I I'm optimistic. I, ho I hope, I really hope for, for the love of God that all these fights at 68, when they negotiate them, they all break down and that he do what he should have did maybe two or three years ago, which is take his ass to light heavyweight. And I'm going to leave it at that. So you guys can let me know what you think. I'm sure I'll get some great comments in this video. They're always welcome. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from doing it. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content interviews news videos breakdowns live fight reaction extravaganza we've got a great community of, of people here boxing fans all over the world from america to the uk to australia and on and on and on so join the empire today hit that subscribe button take care and god